unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. In my life it is working. In my family it is working. In my marriage it is working. In my business it is working. In my mind it is working. In my body it is working. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to the best service in the world. Second to none. If there are any best, they are there. For us, we know this one. Hallelujah. The things you hear here, you can't hear anywhere. The way you feel here, you can't feel anywhere. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I can tell you one thing. People have testimonies in this building. How many of you have testimonies because of Fanero? You see. You see. That's why they come. So if your hand is not up, even here I believe a miracle will happen for you today. In the name of Jesus. Something by reason of the anointing will get you from one level to another. In Jesus' mighty name. Put your spirit into an expect. Switch your spirit to expectant mode. Switch on, switch on expectant mode. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shile Maranda Labaho. Worship Jesus. Wonderful, merciful Savior. Precious Redeemer.
Second Kings chapter 4 verse 8. We're going to read a very long thing, but um, that's the center of exactly what I want to share. So, you're going to love it. The Bible says that it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, and I want you to hear the words. Hear the story. Just listen. The Bible says it fell on in a day that Elisha passed to Shunem. Where there was a great woman, a great woman, somebody say a great woman. Somebody say a great woman. Somebody say again a great woman. The Bible says there was a great woman and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. That means there was a woman, she was great. And every time Elijah, Elijah passes, every time Elisha, sorry, passes, she would want to give him bread. She, she just used to love feeding Elisha. Tell you never feed men of God. I'm joking. I don't even make you smile. The Bible says, she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God, which passes by us continually. She had never had Elisha pray. She had never had Elisha prophesy. She had never had Elisha doing a miracle. She just perceived. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. I'm talking about glory that makes people perceive you before you even introduce yourself. I, I, it's one thing to say, and I'm born again, and people clap up. You understand? But it's another when you don't even say nothing. And the born again thing is on you. Holy man, the lack of sap. Say amen. amen. Now the Bible says that she perceived that he was a holy man of God. And then she tells her husband, say, honey, I be, behold, I see this guy. I think there's something on him. I, I don't know what. But that's why I give him bread. Because there's something about him. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Although that portion of scripture, some Christians and pastors use it for begging money. But not us. Verse 10. She said, let us make a little chamber. I pray thee. Or chamber. If depending on which school you went to. He says, let us, she said, let us make a little chamber. Or chamber. I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick. And it may be when he comes to us, he shall turn in thither. Let's just not feed the guy. Let's make him a room, a chair and a table and a very nice light. Such that if he wants to split mystery and read the Bible before he sleeps, uh -huh. can we do that? Why? She perceived that this guy was holy. And it fell on a day <laughs> that he came thither. And he turned into the chamber and lay there. He said, and he said to Gehazi his servant, Call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said unto him, and, 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 he, said, and, and, and he said unto him, Send now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is it to be done for thee? Wouldest thou be for spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. You hear that? She blessed the man of God until the man of God gets to the point and says, What do you want? Do you want me to introduce you to the king? Do you want to meet the greatest people there is? Do you want to meet the captain God? And she said, No, for I dwell among my own people. It is sufficient. Give me the message version of that very verse. I want to show you something. Through Gehazi, Elisha said, you've gone far beyond the call of duty in taking care of us. What can we do for you? Do you have a request we can bring to the king or to the commander of the army? The Bible says, she replied, nothing. Tell your neighbor, nothing. nothing. The Bible says, she replied, 
nothing. For I am secure and satisfied with my family. Praise the Lord Jesus. She fed the guy until the guy thought maybe this woman has a spiritual need. You know, when we are men of God, sometimes people feed us <laughs> because they know, ah, this guy is anointed. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. They do things. Why? They just want one cup prophetic word on them. And that shall suffice. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, Bambi, some of them, they don't give them the prophecies. <laughs> they just go back home. Hallelujah. But I want to show you a picture here. This woman said, nothing. We're good. As in, I'm not blessing you because I need anything from you. I'm blessing you because you are a man of God. I perceive it. I honor God. Read the next verse. You're going to be shocked. Elisha conferred with Gehazi. There's got to be something we can do for her. But what? Gehazi said, well, she has no son. This is a barren woman who has been barren for years. The husband is old. She needs a child. She's feeding a prophet who can deliver a child. But she doesn't even ask for child. She's not proud. She's just great. <laughs> You'll understand. Let's continue. Next verse. Call her in, said Elisha. And he called her and she stood at the door. Uh -huh. Please be a bit faster. Elisha said to her, This time next year, you're going to be nursing an infant son. Oh, master, oh, holy man, she said. Don't play games with me, teasing me with such fantasies. The woman conceived a year later, just as Elisha had said, and she had a son. The child grew up one day, and he what? And he went to his father, who was working with the harvest hands, uh -huh, complaining, My head! My head! Even the kingdom says, My head! My head! The father ordered the servant, carry him to his mother. And the servant took him in his arms and carried him to his mother. He lay on her lap. Until noon, and he what? He what? He died. She has been barren all this while. She has seen a man of God. She has blessed him with everything. The man of God feels he wants to bless her because that thing happens when somebody ever blesses you and you're a man of God or you feel there's something that stirs you to say, What do they want? Because they're not blessing Elisha because he's their cousin brother or he's a cousin to their uncle. No, they are blessing him because he's a man of God. And he says, well, I can't be fed every day. They've put a chamber in their room for me and a candle and a bed every day for me to sleep and rest. They've never chased me out of their house and there's nothing I can't give them. The woman says, nothing. I'm okay. I'm with my people. Everything I want, I have. Until he goes to comfort the prophet, his fellow, fellow, sorry, his friend, his, his, his servant, Gehazi. Gehazi tells her, look, man, me, I know we can help her. She is barren. She doesn't have a child. The man of God comes to her and tells her, in one year you're going to have a child. But she had refused to say, I am barren. She, had, she can be barren all you want. But she had refused to victimize herself to say, I am barren. Are you understand what I'm saying? She has a child. Child goes with the father in the field. Boy gets headache. Father tells the servant, take him to the mama. Lies on the mom's lap. In the in at noon, the boy dies. The servant took him in his arms and carried him to the mother. He lay on her lap until noon and died. Next verse. She took him up, the dead guy, and laid him on the bed of the man of God. She sat him alone and left She didn't say, oh, mama, tata, chitange, yes. <laughs> no. When the guy died, she just said, <laughs> she put the guy in. Boom. Then she what? Locked. Next verse. Then called her husband. Get me a servant and a donkey so I can go to the holy man. I'll be back as soon as I can. Next verse. But why today? This isn't a holy day. It's neither new moon nor Sabbath. She said, don't ask questions. I need to go right now. Trust me. Give me the amplified of that. Give me the amplified of that. 
Uh huh. Read. And he said, Why go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, It will be. She said, Oh, Sabbath sky, baby. We lost him. <laughs> Our husband. No. When she lays the guy, Why are you going? It's she says, Uh uh-uh. uh. Just trust me. Everything is. Dead kid. Dead what? Dead kid. But she's saying everything is. You trust me. Let's continue in Amplified. Uh huh. Down. Next verse. Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Ride fast and do not slacken your pace for me unless I tell you. Uh huh. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her afar, he said to Gehazi his servant, Behold yonder, the Shunammite. Next verse. Run to meet her and say, Is it well with you? Well with your husband? Well with the child? She answered, Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? She has a baby who is dead in the room, but she's saying, It is well. It is oh, when peace like a river attends. When sorrows billows roll, oh, what a thinking she's going to come to the man of God and say, my baby, my baby's dead, my baby. No. Gehazi comes and says, is it well with your husband? Is it well with your son? Is it well with you? She said, it is well. She has left a dead kid in the house. Up in the bedroom. But she's saying, it is well. Next verse. When she came to the mountain to the man of God, she clung to his feet. Gehazi came to thrust her away. But the man of God said, I'll leave her. Something amazing happened. For her soul, listen, is bitter uh-huh, and vexed within her. And the Lord has hid it from me. And has refused to even tell me. Listen, the baby died. But because she refused to even confess. Dude, let me tell you. She put something in her spirit. That even a prophet could not get through. You don't understand what I'm saying. It's one thing for a prophet to say, I see HIV in your body. It's another when you condition your spirit that the prophet can't even see HIV in your body. Because you know it is well. And some of them, with that kind of spirit, Get disappointed that the prophet didn't prophesy. I realize that there is something about the spirit realm that even God intentionally can hide from a prophet when you condition your spirit in faith. This is more than refusing to confess her son is dead. This was a woman with a spirit of greatness. This spirit, even if the boy is dead, so I, let me, some of you don't understand what I'm saying. Some of you want a man of God to come and say, I see that in your family you've been barren. He says, oh, that's right, man of God. I'm talking of a woman. This is older than the death of her son. Let me help you understand. This spirit in her is older than the death of her son. That is why Eliza is saying, how can I help you? Because in the spirit, he can't see her barren.
she, she had something in her spirit that no prophet could get into. Not because circumstances did not exist in her, but the testimony of her that existed in the spirit realm could not present her a barren woman. Even when the son died, the testimony of her in the spirit realm could not present to a man of God that she has a dead child. She was vexed in spirit, the Bible says, and she was bitter in soul. But Elijah, Elijah says, God has hid it. He hid it. And he has refused to tell me. Why? Because he has not... I'm trying to talk of a certain configuration. Let me tell you. If you can configure your spirit to a place where a man of God can't see, it is easy for a microscope not to see. It is easy for any test not to see. Asimanya cancer, leukemia, I have leukemia. You can you can put something in your spirit that they can put you in a machine, and the machine says, "I don't see." Pneumonia. Not because the machine is not working. And not because you don't feel pain. But because you have a certain plane that you function on that is beyond any human scrutiny to examine by the spirit realm as disadvantaged. Yet, they struggle. The, the man of God couldn't see. Not that Elisha can't see. But because there is something she refused to accept. And because she refused to accept it, God couldn't accept it. Because she couldn't accept it. God couldn't accept it. The angels couldn't accept it. No principality could effect it. No demon could prove it. But it is there. I'm talking of a place where they can say you have HIV. And 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, 80 years, 90 years, they are saying it. But they can't prove it. Because it doesn't have consequence. But the Christians of our day, baby, baby, stop crying. He left me. He left me. He left me. Again, day, again, day, again, day. It is well. You love those counselings of. Then they give you hunkies. Me, I don't give hunkies. God wants to create a character in you where your husband can pack his bags and leave on Thursday. And on Friday, you're telling him, Omwami Yasus the worker. Yagenza Sanyus. And no prophet can say you're lying. Because you sealed up the spirit realm from responding contrary to your. <laughs> Elisha said the Lord has hid something I know there is something but it is hidden I can't see it in the spirit realm when I open my eyes to see in the spirit I see nothing now some of you think men of God don't see no it's not that they don't see some of it is because you have sealed off the spirit realm So some people can't prophesy in your life for...
I'm, I'm not saying prophecy is wrong. Ah, please don't get me wrong. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not gonna, against prophets or the prophecy. I also prophesy. I'm not against prophecy. I'm not against prophecy. I'm only saying this is not actually based on the prophet prophesying. This is based on God refusing to reveal. You have issues. God refuses to reveal them. Why? Because to God, you have configured your spirit. You've, you've, you've exercised your spirit. You, you've, you've, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, have, you have conditioned your spirit to refuse certain things in your system. So the Bible says, exercise yourself unto godliness. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You've exercised your senses to know how to be read in the spirit realm, despite the circumstances that are happening around you. So the woman told the guy, let's continue on the feet. And the Bible says, next verse 28, and then she said, did I desire son of my Lord? Did I not say don't deceive me. So now the problem is Elisha. <laughs> it's not me. It's not the child. It's you. I didn't ask for it. I wasn't complaining. <laughs> now that kind of spirit, <laughs> when it puts the man of God to task, it is saying, you could not have wired this kid in me to die. Because I warned you, he better not die. And you better not be playing with me. Because I have configured my spirit, I have conditioned it. I'm not settling for less necessarily. No. I'm just not worried about the future. <laughs> you get my point? I'm just not what? Much together. Eh? Oh my God, I'm 39. Nobody's saying anything. Oh. <laughs> she was 39, single, not complaining. And not looking for a man to complete her. When, when you tell her, you better be. Because she wasn't searching. She didn't come to a man of God to say, I can't sleep. <laughs> She was alone with God, married, completed. The man is not coming in her life to complete her, no. She was complete before the man came. So when, when you better be, you, you better be, you better be, you, you better be, no, I wish I can finish it. You, you better. One moment, take a bit. So she came to the guy and said, boy, Oh, sir. Did I desire a son from my Lord? Did I not say do not deceive me? Next verse. Then he said to Gehazi, Listen to the Elisha. Guard up your loins and take my staff in your hand and go lay my staff on the face of the child. If you meet any man, don't salute him. If he salutes you, don't answer him. Let's continue. The mother of the child said, As the Lord lives, and as my soul lives, I will not leave you. Why? Because you prophesied. You shouldn't have opened your mouth for to tell me. Either. <laughs> the Bible says he arose and what? What is the husband at home doing? He's okay. He thinks it's well. Do you understand what I'm saying? He's not worried. They are not calling people. Send, send announcements. So, did they dig in the village? You, you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Did, did, did they call this so and so? Did they do this and that? No. Even him, he thinks, me, I think this woman knew. Because the scriptures don't tell us that the man was also great. The scriptures tell us the thing was on the woman. You, you understand what I'm saying? So, God knew how to deal with her. 
In a sense, he couldn't deal with a man. Maybe that man would even have a heart attack. The scriptures tell you he was old. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the scriptures tell us she held him. Let's continue. Gehazi passed on before them and laid the stuff on the child's face. But the boy neither spoke nor heard. So he went back to meet Elisha and said to him, The child has not awakened. And when Elisha arrived in the house, the child was dead laid up on his bed. Uh huh. So he went in, shut the door on the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. Uh huh. He went up and lay on the child, put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, his hands on his hands, and as he stretched himself on him and embraced him, the child's flesh became warm. Uh huh. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro, went up again and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times and then opened his eyes. Uh-huh. And then Elisha called Gehazi and said, Call this Shuna my cheek. And he called her. And then she said, And when she came, he said, Take up your son. At that particular point, even if Elisha is not in the mood to pray for the sick, Somebody wired the boy and said it is well. Even if Gehazi puts a staff on that child and it doesn't work, it doesn't change how she feels. Let me tell you, it's, it's one thing when a woman says, I will not lose my child. Even if he does what? When she says, I will not lose my child. Even if he's lost and she says he's not. He's not. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews, by faith, women receive their dead. Some of them, they are not dead physical. Some are dead spiritual. Look at all backslidden children. Send them to their mothers. Oh, you don't understand that the church is the wife. And Jesus is what? Husband. Do you understand what I'm saying? But for me, that mind that refuses to reject I am barren when I am, that mind that refuses to reject I am poor when I don't have money, that thing that refuses to reject that I have hypertension when the degrees are reading 180 over 92, that thing that refuses to think I am lame when I can't walk properly, that thing that refuses to think I'm not married when you don't have anyone in your house, that thing that refuses to think that, oh, Shekelen, do you understand what I'm saying? It just refuses. It just refuses. He just refuses. That place in your spirit that refuses to be afraid of anything. It doesn't matter what happens in your life. Refuse to fear. I don't care what the doctor said about you. Refuse to fear. I don't care what your landlord is saying. Refuse to fear. I don't care what your mother said, your cousin and uncle. Just refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. Tell your neighbor, I refuse to fear. I refuse to be afraid. I refuse to be shaken by any circumstance. I refuse to be shaken by any report. I refuse to be shaken by any consequence. I refuse to be shaken by any event. I refuse to be shaken by any issue. Tell your neighbor, I refuse. Stop being religious. Tell your neighbor, I refuse. Is it well with you? That is why the Bible says, Say to the righteous man, It is well with you. He said, When you reach righteous people, uh -uh. He said, Say it to the righteous, That it shall be well with him, For they shall eat of the fruit of Banang. It is well. It is well with you. It doesn't matter how you're sleeping now. It is well. Something will change. It doesn't matter whether when Elisha sent Gehazi, they put a staff on you and it didn't work one day. Or the man of God laid a hand on you and the miracle didn't happen. It is well with you. 
It is well. I also don't know how. I don't know how you're going to make it. But I know that you're going to make it. Paul said, brethren, we are persuaded. He didn't say we hope. He said we are persuaded. He didn't say we believe. He said we are persuaded. He didn't say we pray. He said we are persuaded of better things concerning you. And he said, and the things that accompany salvation. He said, when it comes to salvation, there are things we are persuaded. Carrie, I am persuaded you'll be married. I am persuaded you'll have your house. I'm persuaded you'll have houses you never built. I'm persuaded you'll have vineyards you never... I am persuaded. Do you know why Fanero is going to be a very big ministry? Because we are persuaded. We don't hope. We don't pray. We don't believe. Uh -uh. We are persuaded. When it comes to you, I am persuaded. You know there are some people who stay. Some people stay and say, let us pray for our church members. Father, so much suffering. Me, listen, I don't pray for funeral people suffering. Do you know how I pray for you? I say I thank you because they are reigning as kings. I thank you because they are increasing. I thank you because they are multiplying. I thank you because they are big. I thank you because they are already. I thank you. Do you know why I thank? Because that's the formula of prayer. We thanksgiving make requests. Don't request to thank. That's how I pray for you. I am persuaded. Eh, touch your neighbor and tell him Uganda wangi. Send him in Uganda and tell him I am so persuaded. Oh, I am persuaded of your next job. I am persuaded of your next promotion. I am persuaded of your next increase. I am persuaded of your child. I am persuaded of your second born. I am persuaded of your third born. I am persuaded of your increase. I am persuaded of your old age. You will go old. And grow older. Why? I am persuaded. The Bible says the path of the just shines brighter and brighter. And to a perfect day. The longer they live, the longer they shine. The longer they live, the longer they shine. That is why when I look around in Fanero, you'll be like those people they call Mokada and Yirira. You're 90, but baby, your heart. The longer they live, the longer they shine. The longer I live, the longer I shine. Say to your soul, say the longer I live, the longer I shine. That is why I can't wait for the 10th. That's why I can't wait for the 11th of April. That's why I can't wait for the 12th. Because I see myself saying, ah! God has given us a reason to expect the next Fanero. Do you know some people on Friday, they want that Fanero to be the next day. Why? Because they can't wait to shine again. Oh! Oh! Some people wake up, they lose appetite, they lose sleep. Oh God, where am I alive? Oh, oh! Oh, oh. The Spirit was speaking to me today. And he told me, son, can I tell you something? I said, yes, Papa. This is God talking. He told me, do you know the meaning of Shunammite? I said, no. He told me the root word for Shunammite is the word Shuni. And that word is translated as to rest quietly. When you study it from the Hebrew, it is actually so. The word Sunni is translated as to rest quietly. Do you understand what I'm saying? Even if the doctor said this is happening, you rest in God. You rest. Rest in God. Even if they gave you the worst report you have ever received. Oh, find rest in God. The Bible says, we which have believed. 
have entered into this rest. The Bible didn't say that we which are comfortable enter rest. He didn't say we which get jobs enter rest. He didn't say we which are married get rest. He didn't say we which get cars get rest. He didn't say we which have houses get rest. No, he said we which have believed. We enter the rest. Me I told people the first time one time I wanted a car. And I didn't go to God and say, God, I need a car. I'm a preacher. I suffer. Uh-uh. I rested. I don't know whether you understand. I rested. Then one day I was in the living room and I noticed nobody was in. Huh? And then I saw and no, saw nobody was watching. And then I sat down. Open air. Then I got my key. Vroom, 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 vroom. Then I put reverse. Drive. And I used to sing, Oh Lord, you have bowed me. I'm a city. And I drove the Mercedes. Now I change them when I want. <laughs> Some of you are still waiting to see the car. Mama, 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 you wait. The Bible says they just shall live by faith. The day you stop believing is the day you die. Our faith is, is life. It is not survival instinct. Oh. If you don't have a car now, I want you to start now. Start. Start your engine right now. Sit down and start your engine. Boom. 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 I park a little bit. Park, 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 park. Don't come out yet. Ask that person, where are you going? Do you need a lift? Get in. Ooh, ooh. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. There's something I want to build in a few, a few months. I got the plan of it. So do you know what I've already started? I go to, to the site in the spirit. And I say, Muhammad, get that cement and put it there. <laughs> hey! That wheelbarrow, you'll fall down. Pass up. Hey! Do you understand what I'm saying? I make phone calls. Hey, hello. Can you send me 200 bags of cement? I've sent a boy with a check. Oh, what's this space? Watch this space. That's why some of you are not married. You should be now in your bedroom like this. You even trip a little like the gown is longer. That the communication of your faith might become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you, which is in Christ. These things are not in heaven. They are in you. They are not in your job. 
they knew. They're not with your cousin. They knew. Now according to him who is able to do exceedingly abundant. Abba, that we see. You can ask or speak according to the working power that worketh in us. Tell him it's inside. I'm bigger than you thought. Tell him it's inside. I can do bigger than you think. Tell him it's inside. It's bigger than my body. It's bigger than anything. It's inside. Tell your neighbor it's inside. Before I started Fanero, I would go in my bedroom and I get a Bible. And then I see all of you. Then I also went to a stadium. You wait. One day we shall be in a stadium. I I would hear you shouting a man from the right and the left. I would see people in the back raising their hands and saying hallelujah. Just like that. Just like that. Then you put it here. Then I'll get in the bedroom and preach a mystery. And then I say, great is a mystery of godliness. Say amen. Nobody is watching. I am preaching in the bedroom. But you see, that's why me, I never asked for pulpits when I was growing up. Because I had many in my bathroom. <laughs> oh, Remanda. Tell your neighbor, oh, Remanda. Don't worry, it has a meaning in the spirit. <clears throat> oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Colossians, right? 3 1. Uh huh. If you are serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act, 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 act. What's that again? But what is serious, Colati? Act. If you're not serious, you stay seated in your chair. But if you're serious, if you're serious, if you are serious, I'm not talking about people who don't understand what I'm saying. If you're serious, start acting like it. Start acting like a boss before you... You understand? Some of you, you should understand what I'm saying. Get a shop in the spirit realm. Start telling your, 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 your employee, Guarahema, why did you put the money here? Put it in the safe. Don't you realize this is a lot of money? If you're serious, if you're serious, start acting like it. Act. Tell your neighbor, act. Tell your neighbor, act. That's how you know I'm serious Christians. Listen, it's not easy for me to say it is well when my child is dead. But I realize that Christianity is a movie. Christianity is a movie. Die hard. Reload it. Stay too far. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Before we did healing chronicles, we did healing chronicles in the spirit. I used to say, Apostle Emma, who is healed? And then Apostle Emma would testify. <laughs> now people are throwing crutches and you don't understand that it is about acting. How do rich men walk? Start walking like a rich man. Start acting like a rich man. Start sleeping like a rich man. 
Start speaking like a rich man. But some of you, you're believing for greatness and you're walking like you're the most disgruntled thing in heaven. Oh, 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 oh. oh hallelujah. Some of you are going to get cars. You're going to get houses. Your ministries are going to expand in the name of Jesus Christ. Marriages are come. They prayed for you this day. It's going to work. You know, it used to scare me because everything I would act happened. I even fear acting now because I think twice. Everything I've acted in my life, it happens. In this resurrection life, it happens. It happens. That is why when you're sick on your bed, act healed. Start walking. Even if you feel pain, they saw that day, she tell them, no, it is well. It is well. Now some of you, you're like, The Bible says that they that observe lying vanities, they that observe lying vanities, forsake their own mercy. The word lying there is the word Hebrew called shav, S-H-A-W-V. Shav is translated as wasted, as of, in the sense of desolation. Something Wasted. Something emptied because of desolation. Because of a certain destruction. Because of a certain destruction. Because of a certain destruction. That is something desolate. Now, <laughs> Psalm 73 verse 19 says something very important. He asked, how are they made desolate? Give me Psalm 73 verse 19. He said, how are they brought into desolation? The Bible says, how are they de- brought into desolation? As in a moment, they are utterly consumed because of terrors. They are not consumed because their uncle Simania did what? They are not consumed, they are not brought to desolation because the, the doctor said, the auntie said, witchcraft, Simania cousin, uncle Simania, the boss fired them. They are brought into desolation because they are consumed. They, 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 they give too much attention to their fears. That's why people die. The day he had HIV, he lived healthy. The day the doctor told him, you have it, he started dying. He was okay before. But he observed the lying vanity. He observed the wastedness because of desolation. And the desolation was brought about because he what? He was consumed by his fears. Every time fear consumes you, you're desolated. And as long as you're desolated, you get wasted. That is a lying vanity. So when you observe, when you attend, when you yield to a lying vanity, the Bible says you forsake your own mercy. That is why some of you are even taking 20 years for what could have taken one year. And the Bible says, and he refused to take them the way of the Philistine, even though it was shorter, seeing that they would see the Philistine and, and, and fear. They would regard war and fear and turn back to Egypt. This is Moses speaking. He says that it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God let them not. Moses didn't say God let us not. That means Moses knew the difference. Moses spent 40 days in the wilderness because of them, but he knew another way. Because he's the writer of Exodus. He refused to claim their testimony. He says, ah, ah, me, I'm not among them. But then he said, God let them not. Through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, least but adventure, the people repent when they see war and they return back to Egypt. War would come. And do you know, between Egypt 
and, and the land where there was, there was, there was water. You remember God had to separate it. But there was a fear that would make them cross it. That is why some people run faster when dogs are chasing them. There is a fear that can make you do a miracle. At first you're screaming, Pharaoh, but this time, the Philistine gets so on you that you find a way to cross. Your brain thinks for a way through. And amazingly, when you read the story, you realize from the wilderness to the promised land, through the Philistine land, is a 12-day journey. They took 40 years for what they could have done in 12 days. And that's how Christians are. Because of fear, you've taken 30 years to do something you could have done in 3 days. Because you see, there's a principle. There is a principle in the spirit that creates... <laughs> Let me show it to you. Some of you don't even understand what fear is. First John, chapter 4, verse 18. Let's read. First John chapter 4, verse 18. One, two, three. It says, There is no fear. Is God love? Is God love? The Bible says there is no fear, but perfect love casts out all. Who, who casts out? And who is perfect love? Uh huh. Because fear has torment. The Hebrew word for torment is colossus. Colossus is translated as punishment. So if I should read it for you in the right way, it says there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear because fear has punishment. When you fear, you are punished. That's the word colossus. You are punished. You are punished. There is a punishment for anybody who fears and they are born again. Even if you fear, don't say certain things. Even if it is too much and you at the end of it refuse to say no. Refuse to say I am dying. Refuse to say I am sick. The Bible says for in Zion none shall say I am sick. Because the moment you fear punishment comes. That is why Job says the thing that I greatly feared and was afraid of has come upon me. The thing I greatly feared has come upon me. He didn't say, the, he said the thing that I greatly fear. That means from that day, even when Job was young, he used to be there and say, Mandanga, imagine when my children are dying. It's like some of you women, who imagine that your husbands are cheating? I suspect, I have a feeling in my heart. When I look, I feel, I feel like... Kale, you cheat. You suspect. Continue suspecting. There's a punishment for your suspecting. <laughs> Likewise, husbands. You know those men who are not settled. Where is she? Who are you with? Where is she? What time? Huh? 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 Where are you? Huh? 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 You don't trust your children? Huh? Parent? Hey? You're sitting on the TV? You're taking their phones? Huh? They don't do it. Because you prepare for it in the spirit realm. Who is my girl talking to? Who is my son? My children. My, my, my family. You see, you have to care. At night, you come and touch them to see whether they have a temperature. You are attracting temperature. My mom, my mom, my mother taught me reckless faith. So, you know that people who have faith, but they care. I am believing for your healing, but I can check your temperature. <laughs> but my mom, now they can tell you she's sick. You're sick. You'll be okay. She comes in the bedroom. Grace, come and watch TV. You're sick. Uh-uh. 
not, not a small a covenant child. Get out of bed. Now, I used to wonder, there's this, this woman care. Now I understand. Now I understand. But for you, your children fall sick. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Sorry, baby. Sorry. Sorry, baby. I give you a pen now. Oh, baby. 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 Sorry. 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 Look at that. Okay. Look at that. Sorry. Sorry. I'm not even going to go in my bedroom. I'm going to sleep with you here the whole night. I'm going to sleep with you here because you're sick. You're sick. Yes. Give the kid Panadol, lay a hand and go to sleep. For the Lord that watches over your child, she shall not sleep, nor slumber. The Bible says that I and the children the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders, not sickness. The Bible says in Isaiah, your children shall I teach, and their peace shall be many. So my children must have peace. Because God promised. Not because I give them a lot of kalpo. Have a faith that learns to ignore what the devil throws at you. Don't give attention to everything. It's my child. It's my child. Isn't that child God's child also? Do you love that child more than God does? No. And I realized we never used to fall sick for like many people. And I said, realize, hey, some Christians are the way they are because every time they are in the things of the spirit, they are victimized mode. I am sick. I am poor. I don't have a job. I would have. You know, I was driving a taxi the other day and I read behind and it had, had the word Twandi Koze Nayab Obami. Twandi Koze Nayab the Bible says he prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies whether they are haters or they are no haters you will be a success whether they love you or they don't love you you will be a success whether they favor you or they don't favor you let me tell you, even if your boss doesn't like you, God will bring another boss. Even that other one, if he doesn't want you, God will bring another boss. There is a way. He will make a way. Your blessing is not on any man. No man in this world is responsible for your future. At yourself. But you look at how fear Look at how fear killed men in 40 years. And almost every man that crossed into the promised land was a new man. Every person in this room, if you have been having a certain spirit of fear in any way, or you've been acting by fear, from today, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. That is why me, when I'm walking and then fear comes, I ignore the issue. I address fear. I don't know whether I understand what I'm trying to tell you. When I see somebody, I want to pray for someone and there is a problem there. And I realize, oh. This last week a woman brought a kid with a clutch. I don't know that the woman is here. She brought a daughter with a clutch. Hey, Omana, Daremara, I looked at the Kagal. Now, as a normal man, you can think and say, e -e -e. Now, this kind of lemness, how do I sort it? Do you understand? Now, I didn't want to speak in their presence <laughs> of what I was feeling because I don't confess that. So, you know, when I say, I remember the Bible says that he that speaketh in tongues edifies. Built himself up. I went next to the girl. I said, Ram. I started to say, Zika Talamanda. For them, they think I'm asking God to heal. Wow. Me, I am. <laughs> I'm exercising. <laughs> I, I am trying to build myself up. 
then strength came. You know the Bible says strength comes as you wait on the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And then I told the little girl, stand up. She gave me her clutches. She started walking. You should have said, who was there at the office and so? Who? Huh? You saw Hazel. She went back with our clutches. <laughs> with God. Is that possible? All things are possible. Refuse to fear. Refuse to fear. Let me say this and we finish. <laughs> James said, we offend in all things. In many things we err. But if a man offend not in what? He said the same is a perfect man and also able to control the whole body. Let me share a mystery. Some people, their revelation ends on human body. They don't understand that Jesus Christ's church is a body. So that means if a man offend not in words, King James, if a man offend not in words, he's also able to breathe on the whole body. Don't only look at your physical body. Look at the church. Breathe means control. You're also able to control the church. <laughs> Do you understand? So if somebody has high blood pressure, you can put him in control. If somebody has diabetes, you can put him in control. One time I found a woman driving her child, and I knew her very well. And the child was sick. And then I stopped them. I said, hey, why have you left service? She said, oh, my child is diabetic, 20 years old, born with diabetes. Oh, my child is diabetic. Oh, she has diabetes. Oh, la, 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 la. She was born with it. Now it has attacked. Da, 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 da. I said, no, you can't refuse to leave. Can, you can't leave the presence of the healer to go to sick. That's a mistake. I get this kid, I say, in the name of Jesus. Insulin, come, come, come. By the time there is hospital, the girl is healed. So the father next day takes her for the test. And the doctor said for the first time at 20, her body has started to produce insulin. For the first time. <laughs> that is controlling the body. <laughs> the body of Christ. We are putting it in control. Are you hearing me? We are healing the sick. Casting out devils. Making the lame walk. Opening deaf ears and blind. And raising the dead. We are controlling. If you understand what I mean, I mean to say the church is going to move on our tunes. Because we've learned not to offend in words. What do I mean? Even if you have a situation that is as ugly as anything, refuse to say it's a problem. Refuse. 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 There's a lady, she came one time, she did law. She had flunked one paper and she was not going to graduate. So she came and told me, oh, Apostle, I failed in my paper. Da, 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 da. Right now she's at LDC. I failed, I failed, I'm not going to graduate. What should I do? I just told her those three words. I don't know whether she's here. You know the Kagali? Eh? Where is she? Is she around? Where? You put up your hand and they see you. What did I tell you? I just thought that it is well. Her marks changed instantly in the computer. And she graduated. Her marks changed in a computer like this. 37 becomes 73. When no man has changed it. Oh! That is what is going to happen at your job. That is what is going to happen in your business. That is what is going to happen in your marriage. That is what is going to happen in your body. It is well. Handalabala. Zindele balakata. Broko sile maranda. Mere kesetele. Listen, don't punish yourself. Because fear has punishment. The devil will whoop you. You remember that job? Give me that job thing. He said, the thing that I greatly feared. 
give me the, the job thing. Chapter 3. Uh-huh. For the thing that I, which I greatly feared. Now, read it in the Amplified. You're going to be shocked. What does the Amplified say? For the thing which I greatly fear comes upon me. And of that which I am afraid present continuous. Uh-huh. Next verse. And I, I was not, oh, I am not at ease. Nor had I, or oh, have I rest. Nor was I, or oh, am I quiet. So I'm talking every time. I'm poor. I'm poor. You people, I don't know where I'll get the education. Electricity. I don't know whether we shall cross this jam. Oh God, I don't know whether I'll ever get money. Oh God, I don't know whether I'll get money. Oh God, I don't know who will help me. Oh God, you're not quiet. You're not resting. You're not there. Hold on. Be Sunamite. Tell your neighbor, be Sunamite. Be Sunamite. Rest quietly and know that he is God. Find rest, my soul, in Christ in life. We speak healing right now in the name of Jesus. We command him to walk in the name of Jesus. The Lord is healing you now.
are not going to need this again. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You're healed. You're healed. You're healed. Praise God. Praise God. Tell your neighbor it's that easy. Tell them it's that easy. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, are you feeling any pain in your leg? Are you feeling any pain in your leg? No. <laughs> what had happened to you? I got an accident. How many years ago? Five months. Five months ago. And you couldn't walk without a stick. I could not walk without clutches. <laughs> Two of them, ladies and gentlemen. That is what is happening in your life. Hallelujah. That is what is happening in your life. If your sick touch where it's paining right now, God is healing somebody right now. Hand on your I see somebody's somebody's left breast. The Lord is healing somebody. You've been having something, a pain in your left breast. I see God heal. He's healing you right now. Right now. God is healing you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the I will be Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say these words in the name of Jesus. I walk like a Sunamite woman from today. I walk in greatness. I refuse to fear. I refuse to regard evil. I refuse to regard sickness. I refuse to regard any weakness. I choose to concentrate on strength. I choose to believe he's able. I choose to believe it is well with me. And that is my portion. Father, we thank you. Because it is done. In Jesus' mighty name. You're going to see miracles this week. You're going to see miracles this week. Hey! Shout for Jesus! Hallelujah. You see, let me tell you something. When a miracle like this happens and somebody throws their clutches and walks, I want you to understand that the Spirit of God is no respecter of persons. There is definitely something that happened in your life. There is definitely something that happened in your life. God could not touch one and not touch another. No. Somebody's, what has happened to that man's leg? Has happened to somebody's family? Has happened to somebody's body? Has happened to somebody's blood? Has happened to somebody's business? These ones, you're not going back with them. We are going to keep them in the name of Jesus. If you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus, we can't deny you that opportunity. Raise up your hands straight. I want to lead you in a confession prayer. Randa Katala. Oh! Put it up straight. I see a brother in the back. Mandarabala. Repeat this words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe with my heart and I confess with my mouth that you died and rose again. I'm born again. I accept your Lordship from today. In Jesus' mighty name. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041 466 4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest.